Now you're probably already aware that learning phrases and example licks is one of the best things you can do to improve your overall sax playing and especially your improvising. Now that's definitely true and in today's lesson we'll be looking at Stan Getz's live performance on the tune Blues in the Closet. And along with learning some phrases that Stan Getz played from there, I'm also going to show you how you can then take those phrases and start to vary them and make them your own. When you do this process of learning the example phrase and then also generating your own variations, what you're actually doing is learning that phrase at a much deeper level. Essentially what you're doing is abstracting out some of the things that make that phrase sound like it does and then applying it in slightly different ways. And this will make that phrase much more usable and flexible in other musical situations. So the phrases that Stan Getz played were over a blues in B flat, which was a blues in C for him on the tenor sax. And if you're playing alto sax, it's a blues in G. For the first phrase, check out what he plays at the beginning of the eighth chorus. So the first thing to notice is the simplicity of the phrase and how the first four notes are just the root note. Also, you can see how the second two measures have exactly the same rhythm as the first two measures. And he's just varying that second to last note, putting it up to the third instead of being down on the sixth. So the first thing you should do is learn that phrase from memory. That's gonna really help you when you then start to come up with your own variations. Here's an example of my first variation of that phrase. So you can see what I'm doing here is keeping the same rhythm and I'm also keeping that idea of coming back to the root note. I was also using what's called the major pentatonic scale to create this line. So for alto saxes I was thinking G major pentatonic and for tenor saxes that's the C major pentatonic. Now I'll give you another variation now so you can see what's possible. This time I'm using what's called the major blues scale. I'll tell you about that in a second but have a listen to the variation. So again, you can see how I've kept the rhythm the same and I've kept the idea of coming back to that root note, but we've just got a different approach into it. You can also see we've got the flattened third degree here and that gives it that more bluesier sound. Now this comes from what's called the major blues scale, which is basically that major pentatonic scale we had earlier, but you can also include the extra note of the flattened third. So try pausing the video now and see if you can sing an example variation. You don't have to know exactly what you're singing, but just getting that creative process going. You can then see if you can grab your sax and work out the notes. The more you do this, the more you'll find the phrase sticking into your memory and going down into your subconscious. And then when you're in a performance situation, you'll find these kind of lines bubbling up to the surface and you'll be able to play them. All right, so as an exercise now, we'll put all these three phrases together. We've got the original and then the first and second variations. And down below, there's a link for the free PDF of all the phrases that I played today. Okay, so here's this first exercise. Alright, so moving on, we're actually going to take the very next phrase that he plays in the solo. So he's playing this phrase over measures 5 and 6 of the 12 bar blues form. And here it is with the original phrase we were just looking at so you can hear it in the fuller context. So you can see he's going pretty high up on the tenor. So for those of you that are newer to sax or you're not feeling quite so comfortable up in those palm key notes, you guys can put it down an octave and that's absolutely fine. Now notice again first how there's a really strong rhythmical idea. The first seven notes are essentially all quarter notes that have been moved back an eighth note onto the off beats. Another idea you can take from this is how he keeps on coming back to that root note. And finally, he's also using notes from what's called the minor blues scale. For tenor saxes, he's taking notes from the C minor blues scale because we're doing a blues in C for tenor saxes. And for alto sax, that's the G minor blues scale. All right, so just like before, we're gonna come up with two variations of this phrase. Check out this first variation. What I've done here is kept all the notes the same. I've just moved the rhythms around a little bit. And it's just interesting to see how different that phrase can sound, even though every single note is in exactly the same order as it was before. All right, and for the second variation, I'm now gonna keep the rhythm exactly the same, but I'm gonna play around with the melodic contour. I'm still also using notes from that minor blues scale. 
All right, so next up, we'll do the same thing. We're going to play that original phrase and then the two example variations. Okay, moving on to the third phrase, he plays this at the start of the fourth chorus. Check this out. All right, so it's obviously really high on the tenor. That's actually the first note is an altissimo A on the tenor. So if you want to, of course, you can always move these down an octave into a more comfortable range. Now you can think of this phrase in two parts, essentially. It's like two two measure phrases. For the first two measure phrase, we're back to using that major blues scale. And we've got this really iconic bluesy sound of going from the six to the flat three. That's a really common melodic device that you'll hear in blues music. For the second phrase, he starts in a similar way with that six to the flat three, but notice how he's pushed it off the beat and he's stretched out the flat and third. Then we get this really amazing phrase where he's coming down and at one point he's actually creating an E major triad on the tenor sax or B major triad on the alto sax, which is a really out sound, but because he then steps it down chromatically to land on the third of chord four, it resolves that tension and makes it sound really nice. Check out the whole phrase again. This phrase is a little bit more complicated, especially the second half of it. So for the variations, I'm keeping that last half, that idea of that triad resolving down to the third. I'm not gonna change that, but I'm gonna be varying the begin more at the beginning of the phrase. Here's the first variation. All right, so keeping those same ideas in mind, here's another variation. Put it all together now, original and those two variations. Give it a try. Right, to finish off today, we've got kind of a bonus phrase, a more kind of advanced level phrase. Stan Getz plays this at the start of his 15th chorus on the blues. Check this out. So there's all sorts going on in this phrase. We've got diminished arpeggios. We've got this nice guide tone line moving through. We've got this rhythmic idea of like a 4-4 four, four and then 2-2. Two, two. It's a really amazing phrase. Check out the first variation I put together. So you probably get the idea by now. I'm basically keeping the same melodic contour. I'm keeping that idea of four, four, two, two. And we've got those 16th notes at the end. And for the final phrase, here's this third variation. So in this one, what I was thinking was to flip the contour to go up instead of coming down. And then at the end to kind of step down instead of stepping up. Now this is obviously a lot tougher under the fingers. On the original recording, they're playing around 220 BPM. For these recordings though, I've put it down to 180 BPM. But even so, that's pretty fast. So remember, you can use YouTube's playback speed settings if you wanna slow this down to play along with. But here's that original phrase and the two variations. <laughs> Premium members at Online Sax Academy can download all of these phrases in all 12 keys. So if you want to try out these phrases on a blues in a different key, you can look those up. And take this general principle of, if you're learning an example phrase, see if you can generate your own variations. You'll be amazed at how much that then gets into your playing in a more natural way when you go to improvise. Now, if you'd like to learn how to improvise from the very beginning, over at Online Sax Academy, there's the Learn to Improvise course, which will step you through from the very beginning all the way up to improvising over jazz standards. And when you become a premium member at Online Tax Academy, you'll not only have access to that course, but everything else that's on the site as well. So do head over there and check out everything that's on offer. All right, that's it for this week. Hit subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on future lessons, and I'll see you guys next week.